I think we have the college basketball title futures. UConn's number one. I really like Houston. I'd have them winning it all, but you can't be giving Drake jerseys. What is wrong with you? Maybe the Drake curse is stronger in college basketball. Well, how long has he do. been with riding with Kentucky? He wore an with Alabama Kentucky. jersey and Saban retired. The Odds Couple with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, John Roser, and CJ Hurt live Thursdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Today we have two very special guests on our program introducing Lemon hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor and it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Ooh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip. Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. I will take High School Musical with my fifth and final pick because it is a sports movie. You do got to get your head in the game. I love High School Musical. I love musicals. Sports and musicals can coexist in this beautiful world. What a beautiful, beautiful movie. Even though High School Musical 1 is not even the best of the High School Musicals. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're looking for team members to help us reshape the steel industry for a more sustainable tomorrow. Our edge starts with you at www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team. That's www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team. Justin Timberlake. I'm bringing sexy back. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. I can't stop. Live in Memphis, Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. The brand new single, Selfish, is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. 
Elevate your hotel experience in the heart of downtown Memphis at the Westin Memphis Beale Street. Our AAA Four Diamond Hotel boasts spacious guest rooms and suites, refreshed meeting space, upscale dining, and more. Just steps away from the sights and sounds of Beale Street, FedEx Forum, and the Memphis Rock and Soul Museum. After a full day of work or play, retreat to your hotel room or suite featuring luxury bedding, a contemporary bathroom, a spacious workstation, complimentary coffee, and a flat screen TV. During downtime, you can take advantage of perks such as our on-site fitness center, 24-hour business center, and upscale dining at Penny's Nitty Gritty. On your next visit to downtown Memphis, make the Westin Memphis Beale Street Hotel your home away from home. Live from downtown Memphis, this is the Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon. GrindCityMedia.com. It's Chris Vernon. Show. Welcome, 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 welcome. It is the Wednesday, April 10th, 2024 edition of the show. Today on the show, Grizzlies played a game last night in FedEx Forum against the San Antonio Spurs, and we got to see the alien himself, Victor Wimbanyama. They jumped on a plane, and now they're going to play against the Cleveland Cavs tonight in Cleveland. One of their last three games of the season. In addition to that, Jessica Benson is going to join us in studio, as she does on Wednesdays. We'll get to all the news and notes of the day. It is dank outside, but smile. Let's do it. Turn it up! Hope everybody's having a good day. All right. We got a bunch of stuff to get to on the show today, not the least of which was us being at FedEx Forum last night. The best thing I could say about last night is that not only did that game end very quickly, also shortest postgame show of the season because they had to be on a plane by 10 p.m. last night to head to Cleveland, Ohio, where they're going to play tonight. So that is the good. The bad was the game itself, uh, though there were a couple of performances that are worth mentioning. Before I get to anything, I welcome John Roser to the show. John Roser, a.k.a. the Cologne Ranger, the Botsbury Band, a senior sack, a.k.a. John the Backpole, John the Bearcat, a.k.a. John Pistol, John Lance, a.k.a. Yogi Roser. What up? All right, so uh, Devin Walker is, of course, on his way or already in Cleveland, Ohio, where the Grizzlies are going to be playing against the Cavs tonight. Cavs have been in a free fall for real. Our old buddy J.B. Bickerstaff having a rough go since they have gotten Donovan Mitchell and the rest of their guys back in the lineup. They have been in a free fall, and every time you check the standings, it seems like they drop another peg. There is, uh, There are a million things to be decided for these playoff seedings and the Cavs are one of those who are helping decide their playoff seed over the course of these last couple of games. In terms of last night, um, 
getting to see Victor Wimayama in person is something that I have encouraged everyone to do if given the opportunity. I felt like all of them kind of went through the motions last night. Like that was your two uh, teams with no real incentive to win or lose at the end of the season with a bunch of guys given an opportunity to play that have not played with each other and or against each other ever before and i mean it could be it becomes a mess and you know the grizzlies scored like 12 points in the third quarter and then the rest was uh academic after that it was cool to see him in person though he was not totally spectacular i did read where he was like the second guy in history to have like something it was something like five assists and seven blocks and back-to-back games or something like that and i will forever remember the three-on-one break led by brandon clark where nobody wanted to go anywhere near the basket and then it ended with them i've never seen a three-on-one that ended with a kick out three yeah that he ended up closing out on and then jordan goodwin drove on um getting to see him in person was awesome and then the other thing was i gotta be honest i thought my boy conchar's 17 rebounds from a perimeter position was going to stand the test of time and then jordan goodwin broke it last night with 19 rebounds that's going to be a great trivia question if it's not broken like 10 years from now oh 19 rebounds is so extreme yeah now two things with that a he has a real knack for the ball and is a great not good great rebounder who has a knack for the ball other thing is there have to be a billion missed shots for a guy to be able to get that many offensive rebounds and that many total rebounds in a game and the grizzlies did their absolute best to miss shots last night that game stunk uh but as i said you want to be you want me to be positive i'm way past being grumpy about any of these games yeah it's hey if it's gonna stink let it end fast and it ended fast not a lot of free throws and then the post game show was short because they jumped on a plane and headed off to cleveland um the Wimbayama thing is like again it's one of those where it's like i'll remember seeing him his rookie year because there have been many that have opined that this is going to be the worst he's going to be and to that i say oh my god if that is if that is so if he like just keeps getting better and better come on like you know there are people that were like this guy is the best prospect since Lou Alcindor you know coming out of UCLA like immediately dominant and the best player like almost immediately and you know there with any prospect sometimes you can feel like that's extreme and then it got to the point where people said he is the greatest prospect ever and you're like i mean hold on man like the best prospect ever like let's see how this plays out and like we're a year now removed like all right like those people were right (laughs) they were (laughs) they were right those people are right like if you were gonna say there's nobody I have ever seen in their rookie year that looks like that. No. Where you're like, what is... When you can't even fathom what the ceiling is. You can't even fathom. Like, what What could this guy possibly be? You guys getting like 40 and 20 against the Knicks last yeah. week. It's like, what is the... What's the end game here with this dude? Because... <laughs> He's already, I mean, people would be, there's, I'll put it this way. You're not, nobody's going to have him in their top 10 players yet. But I promise you this, Roser, if you and me, and we're out playing a game, Again, I'm not even saying like next five years, next 10 years, who would you want? I'm saying we're playing a game. 
Yeah. And I line up everybody in the league on a wall. There is no way we are getting to 10. <laughs> no way. You're not going to get to 10. You ain't getting to 10 before. So you You're can rank him lower than guys that are more accomplished. What I'm telling you is right now, if we got to play a game tonight, we are not getting to 10 before somebody, one of us drafts that guy. Yeah. He's in the starting five. He's in someone's starting five. I mean, we're not getting to, I mean, I don't know what number we get to. I don't know what number we get to, but it's not, like, it's a cheat code. Let's do it. To have him on no, your team. let's do no, it. We're let's not line it no. up. No. No, why not? Let's do it. See where we, let's see how far are we, we get. We're drafting five, we're drafting a team. Are we taking, all right, so, all right, I take Jokic. Okay, you take Jokic. Yep. I mean, he is so far and away the best player. I, 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 you're going to end up with him now because I have a center. Well, I was going to say Embiid. Okay, so you've got Embiid. Yeah. Fair. I'll take Luca. I probably should have taken Luca. I probably should have taken Luca. Um. Crap. Give, <laughs> I mean, I kind of want to just take him now. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding you. I kind of would. I kind of would take him now. <laughs> I really want to. Uh, give me uh, Anthony Edwards. I'll take Giannis. You'll What's take wrong with you? You are terrible at drafting. Giannis has a cap. How did I end up with Giannis, Luka, and Jokic? You're terrible. No, no, no. No, you're terrible. Well, here's why. Giannis, Giannis needs the ball, and Jokic also will want the ball, too. Giannis ain't shooting threes. Giannis has a calf injury, so I'm not taking him right oh, now. Oh, oh, but you not took that beat him. with your number one pick. By the way, he's playing. Giannis not going to be playing for a while. He's hurt. We're acting like they're all healthy. Yeah, well, if we were acting like they're all healthy, I would have taken Giannis already. <laughs> but, I, but I didn't take Giannis because he's not healthy. You're going to have to take AD or something. I've got Embiid. I've got JoJo. All right. Who you? I've got JoJo. And Anthony Edwards can play, too. He can get rebounds on anybody. He ain't scared. Um... Shoot, God. I mean, I kind of want to take him. Give me Wimby. <laughs> I'll take him. All right, I'll take Curry. Take, I, God, I forgot about him. What is wrong? You are the worst. <laughs> You're so bad at drafting. I forget it's about crazy. him. crazy. I forget I about have, him. I have, a team, <laughs> I have a team with Curry, Luka, Giannis, and Jokic. What is wrong with you? Yeah, I know. This is wild. All right. I want LeBron. Okay, then I have Durant. I have Curry, Durant, you can have Curry Luka, and Durant. Giannis, and Jokic. Curry, Durant. <laughs> Your team is terrible. My team's off. I've got Wimby. I've got Wimby. I'm good to go. We might get to 10. If we're doing the exercise, because yeah, you might take you might. Tatum. Hey, how did you not take your you boy take Tatum? Jason Tatum? Or how did you not take your favorite, Jalen Brunson? <laughs> Jalen Brunson was coming soon. Jalen Brunson, do you know this? He is fourth in the league in scoring. Also, yeah, no also, crap. And y'all and y'all don't give me crap about him anymore. Would you take Brunson or Shea Gilders Alexander? Oh. It's tough. They're three it, and four in the NBA in scoring right now. Um, They're three and four. Brunson shoots significantly more threes and at a higher clip. Brunson's shooting 40% from three, by the way. <laughs> he's shooting 48% from the field and 40% from three, and he shoots almost seven threes a game. I probably shouldn't take an Embiid because he goes against this philosophy too, but... Uh, I would take Brunson okay. for the simple fact I hate living at the free throw line and SGA lives at the free throw line. And here's the point. In the absence of MB Embiid and Jokic are obviously two of the best players in the world and they both happen to play center. But we do this exercise a year from now yeah. and the guy's probably the number one pick. Seriously. Like, they get some guys around him. I mean, he's playing last night with Julian Champagne, and he wasn't even playing with the with the crap that they played all year. They've been wasn't, they are worse this year than they were last year. No Keldon Johnson, no Sohan, no yeah. Vassal, uh, Vassell, none of them. No, they didn't have any. None, none of those guys were playing last night, and obviously 
on the Grizzly side, it was a mess. And I watched so, Malachi Branham brick threes from yeah, right. every place on earth last night on that court. It's countdown to the end of the season. And so they play this game in Cleveland, then they play Friday night against the Lakers, then they play Sunday against the Nuggets, and then that's it. Um, and then the season is mercifully over. And we can just use this as a one-year blip. It was a downtrend, which actually some good things did end up coming out of. And more often than not, they remained competitive. But at this point, it feels like a countdown to the end for sure. Um, I, you know, after, after, after many years, I, I probably should be not, I, I probably shouldn't be all that uh, surprised given um, the amount of tension that the Masters updates have gotten over the years. But I will say I have been uh, wildly overwhelmed with the amount of like I, I every time I check Twitter it's more and more people like counting down or it's almost time for my favorite part or I can't wait for the Masters updates and like I am uh, I am certainly humbled by it every time because I'm like gee uh, get, uh, I get this I, I must tell you so I got to get my voice better by tomorrow for sure that's number one number two is it's very strange it, it, like right before it i never even like really think about it and then people throughout the year be like hey it's oh, it's masters almost right around the corner or, hey you doing masters updates or you know obviously the show has become synonymous with these and it's a huge moment for us but it's not until like today and then tonight that i will start to like it's the only, I, I always just figure it's going to work out and it's going to be fine. And then I will have like a small, not panic attack, but like I will get the nervousness. I will get the nervousness of, man, I hope this is, because you, you know, there, you never want to fall off, right? You never want people to be like, oh man, I always used to like these, but that one sucked. You know right. what I mean? Like, I just don't want it to be, I want people to like it. And I, like, I guess then I always come back to, in the end, it's a guy acting like an idiot with mascots dancing behind him, and there's, there is a floor to how bad that can be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, I do have a lot of built-in advantages on this to where it's like, even if the lines aren't up to bar or people don't recite them for the rest of time, uh, that it's, uh, there's still a, a, low, a low floor. In terms of, uh, I mean, uh, a high floor in terms of how bad it could possibly be. And I do think we got some tricks up our sleeve for this year. But I do want to say for everybody that has reached out, I am uh, uh, overwhelmed, to say the least. Uh, how many people now? And, and look, that is, it, it is 100% credit to our you know, the show has grown and grown and grown. There's a lot of people outside of the Memphis area that now listen to us on a daily basis. But make no mistake, that is because of Memphis people that the thing exploded yeah. the way it did. Because we've been doing it for a long, long time, and it got more and more attention. And now all of a sudden, you've got people from all over. And people that don't pay attention to us the rest of the year pay attention to us for a couple of days <laughs> because of these updates. And so big shouts to everybody that passes that along and looks forward to it because it is intensely overwhelming every time I check my Twitter feed and there's more people posting videos and GIFs and yeah. looking forward to it and counting it down. And I'm like, damn, man, I hope it doesn't suck. Well, so for the people who watch <laughs> it and they go, this is dumb. I Yeah. I mean... I told you one of the most profound moments of my life. And I cannot remember her name, which makes it less profound, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> the principal at my elementary school grabbed me and my buddy Andy Warden. It's a name I'll never forget, Andy Warden. And she brought us into her office. And I can't even remember what we did. So as I say this, the story gets less and less profound. Not only can I not remember her name, I cannot remember the action in which I was a part of. Yeah. 
but she stood in front of me and I rem I, the only thing I remember that was so profound and it stuck to me until this very day to when now I am a father with an eighth grader and a fourth grader. She stood in front of me and, and as far as I know, my kids have never had to endure something like this, but it was something like from one of those like 50s shows, though I did not grow up in the 50s. But if you were to watch like Leave It to Beaver or something and you would see this teacher in the school, you know, berating the children, as it were. Um, that was the same thing. And, 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 the, and the principal called us in the office, and, of course, we have our heads hung low because we have done something. I can't even remember what it did. And I will never forget her getting up in my face, and she's wagging her finger as if she was on Leave it to Beaver or something, and we're back in time like my, when my parents grew up. And she is, like, hunched over, almost like a cartoon, right? And she's saying, you boys are silly, just silly. She's raising her voice, right? Yeah. And like it's like ingrained in my head. This uh, cause it's never happened to me before or since. And of course, at the time, you're like, <gasps> like you know, what kind of trouble am I going to get into? She's going to call my parents and whatever else. And she's and but I'll never forget her using that term because then of course me and Andy walked out of class, and then for the next like seven years of our life until we graduated from high school we would yell at each other you boys are silly You're just silly. Si you boys are <laughs> silly just silly yeah and you know i say that to tell you that the master's updates originate from that very moment if there were in the marvel world the origin story of this is what created a monster. It was her. And I don't know her name, and she's probably dead. Well, let's hope not. I hope not. Whatever your name is. Whatever your <laughs> name is. Lady that yelled in my face how silly I was. But if they ever were to do the origin story of how I became uh, the way I am or why I am at this now age in which I should not be dancing around with mascots in the background, it is because I will forever prove her wrong that I will get ahead acting like this. Silly doesn't have a retirement age. If you stay silly, it can pay off. Yes. And I will, till my dying day, prove that lady wrong. She is my origin story. Yes. Whoever you are, this profound moment, and someone, someone like pointing in your face and <laughs> saying something like, I mean, and of course, in my infinite immaturity, I walked out and thought it was the funniest thing ever. It is funny. It is funny. It is something like from the 50s. Yeah. And I was not. <laughs> though, though sometimes it seems I feel very old I, I was not going to school in the 50s This would have been in the uh, Well I guess it would have been in the 80s it Would have been in the 80s probably When it took place But I probably have I need to find one day I need to go find a yearbook And I'm going to find her name There's pro It's probably at my mom's house yeah. My mom probably has one somewhere Laying around Um but anyways, uh, the, the whole point was a massive thanks to all of you that are excited about it, passing it around, and we will do our best not to let you down tomorrow. We know the, the bar is high. We know that people look forward to this, and we will do our best not to let you down. Uh, last the the night, rain may let, may let you down before we do. I did panic about that last night. Yeah. Then it gets to the first round, gets rained out. Just they're saying that there's thunderstorms, and I'm thinking, what are we going to do? I guess we'll just figure it out. I mean, it's a rain rain party. Yeah, they can't puddle party. If it's thunderstorms, like they ain't playing through the hard rain or lightning. No play through rain. They can play through rain, but you know last they, year they had to delay bad. it a couple times. Last year they did. They had to right. Do Kepka had to go. Kepka and Ron had to finish the third round like early. Sunday morning. You remember that because it was so bad Saturday afternoon. Like you remember that tree falling? Yeah, that like somehow didn't kill people. Yeah, 
That was crazy. Well, I remember one of the greens that Kepka and Rom both were hitting on last year in round three. It's like, well, you would literally see a puddle on the green. Like, it is just a puddle of water that's there. And it's like, yo, why are they playing on this? Yeah. All right. A uh, couple of things that I do want to get to. Um, last night, you and I were talking while we were at the game, and it was like, bro, what is going on with this Calipari thing? You remember how weird it was yesterday? You, like, filmed this video with a flip phone, but then, like, and it was, like, saying goodbye to Big Blue Nation, and his wife posted some, you know, somber goodbye on uh on facebook or whatnot and then we got to last night and it's like why is there still no official announcement and there was these kentucky people that were posting you know with the freedom of information act you can get everybody's contract and it was basically the coach has to talk to the athletic director and the powers that be at kentucky if they are going to engage in another job you know all this kind of stuff yeah, right? right all this kind of talk or whatever and then it started to like buzz around like bro is he not going to be able to do this like what a what a disaster this would be if you have to somehow like is he just gonna have to because he talked to them before he allowed people to know that he was talking to him like is it now going to be a legal thing and then he has to be coaching them and it's just going to be the most awkward thing ever because everybody's already written and said what they've said (laughs) you can't go back now and then by this morning it has become official. John Calipari officially named as the head coach of the Arkansas men's basketball program. Hall of Famer is going to be making less money than he did at Kentucky. He signed a five-year deal starting at $7 million per season, less than the 8.5 he was making with the Wildcats. The deal announced uh, today includes a $1 million signing bonus and a $500,000 retention bonus each year of the contract, plus incentives for making the NCAA tournament and advancing deep in the tournament. There are also two automatic rollovers for NCAA tournament appearances that would extend the deal to 2031. And so uh, he replaces uh, Eric Musselman, who had left there to take the USC job. Um, And he had, of course, been at Kentucky since 2009. So... That is a long time. It's a time long time he was that, there. That he had been there. And, you know, when you go through the ones that are going to get drafted this year, I think I, I think I read where it's going to end up the final tally, assuming, you know, is it Shepard, Edwards, and Dillingham? Yeah. The final tally is going to be 50 <sighs> NBA picks. And 50. And you got one title, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's terrible. That's an average of 3.3 NBA players a year. Well, that's terrible. Amazing recruiting. Terrible results. Bro, how did you have 50 NBA players and you got one title? That's a demerit. I'm sorry. Yeah. How? Well, so he had like the... I, on one end, I'm, I'm reading it, and I'm like, holy hell, that is incredible. He had the undefeated team that I think they lost to Wisconsin. They lost to Wisconsin in the the one with Towns and Devin Booker and those guys. They were undefeated, and they lost to Wisconsin in the Final Four, and then Wisconsin lost to the Okafor, Tyus Jones, Justice Winslow, Duke team. And Wisconsin had Frank Kaminsky. Sam Decker. Oh, yeah, Sam Decker. And Bo Ryan on the bench. Hey, not only the 50, if, that's, if that tally is right, 35 first-rounders. P.S., who all have become awesome. <laughs> like, so 35, like, that's over two of them first round, two first rounders a year. There's like very few that yeah. have not, uh, certainly the ones that have gotten drafted in the first round yeah. or the top 20 have been better than they were drafted. We talked about that when we were talking about Reed Shepard and Dillingham, that you go through it from Monk to Maxi to Quickly to, I mean, you can go through all manner of them. There's very, there's very few. Daniel Orton, Ty Ty Washingtons, and Tyler Ulysses. Like, there's a few of those. Yeah. But generally, and then the, the obviously at that high end, you've got the Jamal Murray, De'Aaron John Fox. John Wall, DeMarcus Cousins, De- well, De'Aaron and Fox, Bam out of bio. SGA. SGA. Randall. Julius like a lot Randall, of all NBA. Carl Anthony Towns, Devin Booker. Yeah, like it's it's a who's who. It's like yeah. 50 All Star teams. Is it Anthony Davis? Yeah. 
Pro like 50 All Star teams. I mean, we forget because the NBA the NBA did not go his way with how it became so spread out and the, there was a premium on outside shooting. But dude, like Michael Kidd Gilchrist was awesome too. In and he's a number two pick in the sure. draft. Like I mean, dude, he the, just the NBA did not go his way. Much like he didn't go to a local force way. You know, like right. those were really good players. The league just didn't go. Understood. Uh, the other thing that, t- so anyway, Cal Perry is official to Arkansas. Uh, I saw this morning, you know, this is this, this hardcore city there in Lexington. So them jokers have got the plane trackers going. And do you see the plane tracker this morning? Oh, no. Where's it going? From, no, it was from Waco. It was from Waco to Lexington. There's a picture of Cal Perry draft picks. It's like 50 all-star games between those guys, oh probably. God. It's crazy. One national title. That's terrible. Oh, yeah. Did you say Maxi? No. That's the, terrible. Though. Yeah, that's another one. <laughs> guys going to get up. You forgot about it. Tyrese Maxi. <laughs> it's literally $5 billion he's, worth of players. He's had so many of them, we forget. <laughs> we forget about some of them. Who got drafted way too low in We forget about the guy well. who just had 50 points like two nights ago. Who? Well, you said Maxi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Maxi. Right. Um, anyway, it sounds like Scott Drew is like the target. Yeah. You know, they don't want to wait on Billy Donovan. Yeah. I, like I saw my buddy, Matt Jones, who does Kentucky sports radio and he had the list and it said, Billy Donovan, uh, Scott Drew, I think Dan Hurley, which they're not getting Dan Hurley. I don't think Probably. Dan Hurley's leaving there. I mean, you just won back to back national titles. Yeah, why would he write that? And he said, and my guess is it doesn't get past two. And then this morning, I saw the Kentucky people posting that there was a flight from Waco to Lexington. Now, there is literally no reason on earth that that would, a plane would be in the air from Waco to Lexington other than Scott Drew probably going there and talking. I wouldn't guess. I don't yeah, know. But, it, but it's like you wouldn't fly there until you've and the other thing, and the, well, and the other thing is, I mean, I guess you never know. Yeah. Like, I don't know the way the internet works. Maybe somebody could draw up a, a plane map or something like that. But I saw Matt uh, put that. And then 33 minutes ago, Scott Drew, ju- this is when it gets crazy time, right? Scott Drew just posted. I'm looking at his Twitter. Great lunch spot in Waco on a rainy day. And so he posted a picture of him in Waco because. I guess this has been going around everywhere. This whole like, oh, there's a plane headed from the Waco to Lexington flight is close. And apparently there are TV crews at the airport. So somebody flew from Waco to Lexington and it'd be funnier than hell if it was not Scott Drew. Yeah, it's clearly not Scott Drew. Well, like he would not fly to Lexington. You wouldn't think so. Until the deal's done. You wouldn't think so. Yeah. Like you would like Calipari never flew from Memphis to Lexington. He did not go until the deal was done. So Scott Drew posts a picture 30 minutes ago. Here it is. Great lunch spot in Waco on a rainy day. No better friend and supporter than Ed Shiro and Alliance Bank. <laughs> With the 100 side. So funny. So that's just like some massive booster that is like, Scott, you're not going anywhere. Yeah, we'll pay you whatever. You know Baylor's got money. Man, he has been there so long. Yeah, that's crazy. You remember his name? Jeff Calkins wrote a column trying to get him not hired here. Yeah. After Cal Perry left, right? Well, the thing is what he... And that's... that's, So that's... He's been at Baylor for over 20 years now. What? 2003. How many guys have been at schools that long? Hold on. Let me look at that thing. Because you, because we lost Bayheim and we lost Jay Wright and we lost Roy Williams and we lost the Bill only, Self's been there over twenty years. The only other one. Hold on, let me look before you before you tell me. I'm gonna well, look I at. I don't know. I'm trying to. Hold on, I'm gonna look at the top twenty-five and see. Obviously, uh, Greg uh, Greg Campy at Oakland because that was a huge story during the year. I wonder if Painter's been there twenty years. Maybe. Hold on, I'm gonna look this up. Because I know you suck at Peyton's been there. Mark Few. Mark Few's been there longer. Huh? Mark Few's been there longer. Oh, yeah. Painter got to Purdue in 05, 06. So that's longer. Oh, uh, no. I guess no, it's, it's not. less. I guess it's less. Bill okay. Self and Scott Drew are the same. Here we go. I've got it. You got Painter, 05, 06. 
Scott Davenport at Bellarmine at 0506. Bill Self was 0304. Scott Drew 0304. Leonard Hamilton 0203. Yep. Randy Bennett at St. Mary's 0102. James Jones at Yale in 99 2000. Mark Few 99 2000. Oh, how did we not Izzo. know this? Izzo, yeah. Izzo. 95, 96. And then Campy. And then yeah. Campy. Yeah, that was, you know, next year is going to be his, it's going to be Izzo's 30th year. Yeah. 30th. The long time, man. 30 years. You would got to think he's got to retire soon. So Scott Drew is, what did we say, sixth? No, seventh. He's tied for seventh. Yeah. Scott Drew and Bill Self, the same time. And honestly, how many Big 12 titles did Scott Drew have if Bill Self doesn't exist? Because they've been there the same time. He won the Big 12 tournament nine times. Bill Self won the Big 12 tournament nine different times. Scott so Let's see. how many times? I mean, he's got... He's won the Big 12 Coach of the Year three times. He's won the Big 12 regular season twice. Yeah. And obviously, he won that national title in yeah. 01 or in 21. 21 22 is the only only big uh, regular season he won. Well, I remember for a long time how many at people, Baylor. How many people are waiting 18 years before you win a national title? So I, I remember a long time at Baylor, it was he was the, the guy who gets players, but his team's underachieve yes. come tournament time. Like, that's what it, and it all changed like four or five years ago. It all started to change for him. I will say this, though. You know how you never forget those gambling losses? That one year, the first round, Baylor, like, always falls on their face. That was the thing. Yeah. And uh, I remember there was some coach Alan Boston loved, and we took Nebraska in the first round against them. Who was that coach at Nebraska that had the Tim, glasses? Uh, Tim. Yeah, we loved him. Like Tim Rice? No, not Tim Rice. But he had like the glasses, and then he had that one awesome player who was uh, like, you know, big in the Big 12 or Big 10. I, I think they're still in the Big 12. Tim Miles. Point. Tim Miles. Where is he now? Does he still coach basketball? Tim Miles is at San Jose State. I'll be damned. Man, they got throttled by Baylor in the has, first round. He has not done well he at hasn't. San Jose State. 8 and 23, 21 and 14, 9 and 23. Damn. Second year was good. Damn, Tim. Anyway, that Joker, man, we we got throttled in that game against Baylor. First round of the NCAA tournament. I remember being so depressed over that. I was like, and he lost his mind and like damn near got kicked out of the game and it sucked. He only made one tournament at Nebraska. Was, I know. That was the year we did. That was the yeah, year we bet. 13, 14. That was the year we bet him. We're like, ah, Baylor always falls on their face. They're primed to get picked off. Here's a good little upset pick. And then Baylor just beat the piss out of him. It was terrible. That was a terrible deal. Uh, speaking of terrible deals, last night in the middle of our game, as we were trying to pay attention to everything else that was going on in the NBA and how much that matters towards the standings, that video started circulating around of the ball being inbounded in Milwaukee, uh, in the Milwaukee-Boston game, and Giannis Antetokounmpo, he appears to be, like, walking. And I am not John Roser. And tears his – well, it doesn't tear. We don't know. Yeah. But immediately goes down in a heap and then has to be helped off the court by his teammates – Everybody is waiting with bated breath. It appears that he's grabbing his calf. So, you know, the first thing is, oh, God, hopefully it's not Achilles because it's one of those just what the heck just happened. And we, we also went through it where a calf strain led to an Achilles tear with one Kevin Durant. Yes, it did. Once upon a time. Yes, it and did. so it's like. You know, once you see that, it's like, oh, my God, what just happened? Right. He grabs his leg, and you're like, oh, geez. Then you're like, well, maybe the best, but maybe he's got a cramp. Maybe he cramped up, you know what I mean? A cramp in your – and then this looked a little more promising as he was at least putting pressure on it and hobbling into the locker room. And then you just sit around and wait, and then by the end of that game, they have diagnosed him with a strained calf. And then everyone then attempts to put on their doctor's hats – 
and there's these stories of it really depends on what kind of a cash drain or whatever else now and look this is one of those where um i have long told you especially going into the playoffs i never want to hear groin i never want to hear hamstring i never want to hear calf yeah any of these soft tissue things like i've just had so many bad experiences with them where you get somebody hurts one of those and you get hopeful and then it's always longer it's always longer it's never faster than what you think it's going to be and it's always longer than what you think it's going to be and because you know you can do all kinds of rehab and you can do all the you know hot and cold and you can do all that kind of stuff but in the end i mean the thing's got to heal up and you got to be able to trust it and so especially with you know being around this nba team anytime i've heard any of those and you've dealt and we deal with it in the playoffs every year somebody hurts their groin hurts their hamstring hurts their calf and it's like oh crap right Jeez louise how long is this going to be now there's two things here a i've watched this guy's knee like buckle in 50 different directions and then he just played like so he might just be this indestructible human being possible The other thing is there are certainly grades. There's levels to this. There are. And Luka Doncic has had calf strains this year, and he's been out like a week and a half, two weeks, right? Yeah. So it matters. Then then we're starting to get into, I see all these, like, you know, the Twitter doctors. And I'm not talking about, like, Twitter doctors, like people that don't know what they're talking about. I'm talking about these people that, like, analyze sports injuries. And they're like, yeah, I mean, it matters which part of the calf is strained and, you know, what the severity of the calf strain is because you can just say, hey, he's diagnosed with a strained calf. But, I mean, I, I do, there's part of me that wonders, are you just going to leave it open-ended? Because it feels like you just got to leave it open-ended. Yeah. And my, my inclination has always been to expect the worst yeah. on stuff like this. Because it, also, it's so easy to retweak, right? And it's so hard to trust. And he had already been kind of hobbling yeah. in these last couple of weeks. And so you want to talk about altering everything. It changes that everything. That would alter everything. It changes everything. It's going to alter everything the rest of their season. Yes. You know, they got they got to hold on for dear life to their seating. I mean, they could, you know, right now they are sitting at two. But they are... A game. And they're two games up on the friggin' Magic, who they have two games against. Yeah. They could really fall. With three games left. Two of them are against the Magic. Yeah. Who are huge, and it would be nice to have Giannis Antetokounmpo against. Right? I don't know how far they could fall. Because Cleveland's two behind them as well. What if we look up and they're in the friggin' 4-5 game? That's real. I mean, it's possible. Oh, very possible. Very possible. Are they? Is, is the Magic game tonight? They play them twice, so it they got to play them. It is. Tonight, yeah. And then the other one, they got, they're got they at Oklahoma City. By the way, Orlando's favored. Yeah. Tonight in Milwaukee. The so Orlando at Oklahoma City at Orlando. They absolutely could lose these last three. And then they're playing in the friggin' four or five. Because OKC's having to play it out because they're trying to get the one seed. I mean, right. And they brought Shea Gilgis and uh, Jalen Williams back last night. Yeah. So they got their guys. Oh, yeah. They could, uh, like, the Bucks. Hey, look, the Bucks have been, like, under 500 anyway. Yeah. Post All Star break. Like, they've been average anyway. Much, and they just spent a week losing he, to the Grizzlies, the Wizards, and the Rams. And, that, and that's where it comes. If, if they. If they they got nothing to blame but that right no, there. Those are those are the those. It won't be losing Orlando at Oklahoma City at Orlando. No. Any team can lose those games. It's that three game stretch. They right there. will That's pay. That's pitiful. They are paying dearly for that. Yes, like that is pitiful. And but here's the thing: you drop to four or five. Now you got Boston in the second round instead of the East Finals. Yeah. Dude, what if that happened? What if what if Boston? has to play friggin' Philadelphia in the first round and then face Giannis in the second round. 
I mean, that would be a that would be a road becoming of someone who put up a historic season. Well, if Giannis you, isn't, you would prove that well, you are. It, yeah, but here, but you no, know, but if Giannis isn't right, then Milwaukee's not getting out of the first round. They could beat Cleveland or Orlando. They could probably they could beat the Knicks too. They could come beat on. Cleveland. They won't beat the Knicks without Giannis. They could. Hell no, they won't beat the Knicks without Giannis. All right, I know four one Knicks. I know you're on the Knicks nuts, but the Knicks can't score four one Knicks. Oh, you see Ananobi last night? I got you. He's still wearing that crap on his elbow and dropping them. He, he's still wearing it on his elbow. And, and I, I was the original Knicks lover, but once I realized that they were not it, Mitchell Robinson has not been Mitchell Robinson, and they're, been, not they're not getting Randall Julius back. Randall back. I mean, it's a different deal when you're planning every single night against one team. Yeah. And it's like, who is the relief for this guy? How many games are you going to be able to win 91 to 88? <laughs> it's hard. I mean, Milwaukee without Giannis, they can win all of them. <laughs> like, but God, Bobby Portis is there for it, Bobby, bro. Bobby Portis is there and what for if, it. Th- what if they just plug in Thanasis and no one knows the difference? Well, that's, th- th- you'll notice the difference quick. <laughs> you will. He <laughs> dribbles the ball off his leg. <laughs> and then you'll notice real fast. <laughs> Thanasis on the goof. Real bro. fast, you'll notice. Look, you're, there is a thing with Giannis. It's like, this is not a normal human being. Yes, he's not. We have seen him in a crumpled mass where it looked like his season was over and the guy was back like two games later. Oh, he's getting his... He's got Got it locked in. What are those big cushion things they wrap around their legs now? What are those things called? Normatex. Yeah, he's got a Normatex on it. And then as soon as he's done with that, it's going to get massaged. And as soon as he's done with that, he's doing like it. He's just, subhuman. Yeah, right. I got you. I mean, it's going to be round the clock treatment for him. It will be. Th- look, it's going to be. It, it, Boston could. They could have the road from. I mean, because look, if it's Miami or Philly, if Philly doesn't yeah. catch up, if it's Miami or Philly, and then it feeds into. You know, just because Indiana won't lose, and and well, and just by, uh, you know, the way this broke, if they happen to lose out, and Orlando flips the standings, yeah. and next thing you know, you got to play them in the second round, and Giannis is okay by then. Indiana's got brutal. Cleveland and Toronto left at Cleveland, and then or no, at Cleveland, and then versus Atlanta. Mm. I mean. They split those two. They're probably not falling. Like no, those teams are terrible. Yeah, Atlanta's locked into that play-in spot, so they they're not care. nothing. There's nothing different with them. Well, they I guess they could still play for home court, and they're getting Trey Young back. But they could play for home court yeah. in the play-in, and they're expecting Trey Young to play. But Indiana is significantly better than them, and has yes. been all year. Yes. So, and then the other Cleveland's one, been at Cleveland, and Cleveland they've been, been in up. a free fall. Yeah, they have been. They have just their their season has gone. Bad, bad. Speaking of a, uh, of you know, a, you know, if it if it fails completely, they may bust that whole thing up, and then we got to get in the Jared Allen business here. Spe- huh? I'm with you on that. Uh, I'm with you uh, on that. I'm with you uh, on Jared Allen. I'm with you on Jared if Allen. If they got to break, if, if they go bust again, I'm with you on and Jared gonna, Allen. And they're gonna bust that thing up. Yeah. I'm we got to get in the Jared Allen business I over don't, here. I don't like Jared Allen a couple of years ago or last year saying that he was not ready for the playoffs. Like it was too big for you him. You don't need that, to be. That kind of worries me. But look, I'll get in the Jared Allen business. He would be God. He would be speaking, unbelievable for us. I did want to ask you. What kind of contract he got? Uh, I think it was like five years, 100 million. It's not terrible. Uh, not terrible. That's amazing. Yeah. What not are you talking about? Not terrible. Um, What's his contract? I mean, Nick Claxton's going to cost more than that. I'll get it. Jared Allen or Nick Claxton. I'll I'd rather five, have five, a hundred. Oh my God. Yeah, five and a hundred. Yeah, five for a hundred. That's exactly what it was. And twenty twenty six under contract till then. Yeah, I'll get in that business. I'll get in that business. I'd rather have him than Nick Claxton. Twenty million bucks. Nick Claxton is going to cost more. And all right, so do we need to root against the Cavs? <laughs> I don't think we have to root against them. I don't think no. they're going anywhere. Probably not. Pro- I do want to ask. Speaking of a free fall. It's not really a free fall, but I'm on the air doing post game last night with Bennett Doyle, and I go, "What the heck, dude? The Clippers are up dude. 51 to 16 on the Suns." Do you did you see the first 10 minutes? No. 35 to four. What happened? <laughs> and I looked at, it, I was dude. like, De- Bennett goes, Bennett looks at me, and goes, "All right, like Durant and Booker not playing," and I was like, "Well, let me check the box where I was like." No, they're playing. Beal's playing. And I scroll up. I go, 
James Harden and Kawhi aren't playing, though, for the Clippers. I'm going to give credit where credit is due because I'm jealous of this joke. And I know his name is Mud here. But Tim McMahon actually made me laugh out loud. At He, he was analyzing that game, and he said, guys, I'm going to break. He said, I'm going to blame Frank Vogel for this. Okay? And not for the reason you'd think. But from what I gather, Frank Vogel walked in their locker room and said, guys, I want you to treat this like an elimination game. <laughs> That's legitimately funny. And he's like, and he didn't know. That's funny. He's like, he didn't know that that's the wrong group to say that, that to. That is, that is funny. <laughs> they do get their ass kicked in elimination they games. They do get their, yeah. But, he, guys, I want you to treat this like an elimination game. They're down 35 to 4. 35 to 4. That's crazy, bro. They started 0 for 19. <laughs> I mean, like, like the Clippers didn't even have to try in the second half, and they try. still won by 13. Crazy. All right, let's take a quick break. We're going to come back. <sighs> Jessica Benson joining us. Chris Varnett, you know. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Did I invent this? Loki? Did you? I spent years calling my ex producer, Cowboy Carson, and now Beyonce. She Didn't decides she, she, wants wind? To, she wants to dabble in country in the genre. Now she's calling her album Cowboy Carter. When she's doing her next concert, That's and right. she says, Hey, my new album's about to come out. Uh, inspired. Cowboy Carter. It's inspired I just, by The Gary Parish Show. Shout out GP in yeah. Memphis. The Gary Parish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Vince Williams is going to go to All-Star Weekend. Now, what a great thing for him. Kudos to, to Vince Williams Jr. You know, um, he was an injury replacement on the Panini Rising Stars. He'll get a chance to be part of the All-Star Weekend Showcase. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. There's no substitute for experience, the knowledge gained from having been there before, and the passion to share what you know to make everyone around you better. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by January 12th, and you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account and be entered into our Grizzmas drawing. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today 
at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Today we have two very special guests on our program introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor and it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip. Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, yeah. back to your host, Chris hey. Vernon. At the jungle, man, we at the mud. Play. Keep it moving, man, we on the run. Hey. Better struggle, but we ain't done. Yeah. Better struggle, but we overcome. Hey. At the jungle, man, we at the mud. Play. Keep it moving, man, we on the run. Hey, better struggle, but we ain't done. Keep on swinging, never know when we gon' land, right? Hit you with the left, up a cut, say goodnight on the canvas. You not know who the man is. Everybody got a plan until the punch landed, you know? I'm a rose through the concrete, I've been through it. Here to beat up on the odds, boy, y'all been proving. All the doubt is wrong, let me go and call it out. Feeling good to make a shot of gun, put in my give me out. Yeah, been a struggle, but we overcome. Hey. All right, we're back. Chris Vernon Show, Caesar Sportsbook. You can go to your app store. You can type in Caesar Sportsbook, and you can download the app for free, and you can use it legally in the state of Tennessee. New users get up to $1,000 back as a bonus bet if you lose your first wager using the code GCM1000. GCM1000. Caesar Sportsbook. I'll say Grizzlies, Cavs. It is the biggest line of the night in the NBA. Ooh. Oh, well, that's a hint. Is it? Because the Spurs play the Thunder. Nine and a half. You are way off. <laughs> Thirteen and a half. You are off. <laughs> Lower? Higher? Sixteen and a half? You are off. Keep going. Stop. Nineteen and a half? It's One lower. down. 18? It's 18 and a, and a half across the board. Holy Brandon crap. Brandon Clark's out. Who? He has a hand contusion. <laughs> oh, who cares? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that, that means what, Brandon how, Clark does not have a hand we contusion. See him again? I don't know. How, how many points is that? <laughs> that means Brandon Clark is that, 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 <laughs> that means Brandon Clark is fine. <laughs> Jack White can't do it all. Okay? Jack, White, Jack White can't do it all. Oh, this guy was mad at me about Jack White yesterday. Why? Uh, let me see if I can find it. I might, I might have it in my uh, notifications. Where uh, I had mentioned it on, I, I had made a joke about the Jack White thing on the mismatch, and I was like, you know, I hope they sign Meg White too, or whatever else. And the guy was like, don't disrespect Jack White. And where I gotta go back and find this? There was some, you know, uh, there's a bunch of people that listen from like. Australia, and I think the dude's Australian. He's yeah. Australian. Yeah, and so then they were mad, like, they were like, "Don't disrespect Jack mm. White. He is this and this and this and this." And I was like, "Oh my bad, dude." And he went to um, uh, what? He went to Duke. Huh? He went to Duke. Duke. He played for. Uh, I saw him in the G League actually because he played there for Grand go. Rapids. For Yo, Chris Vernon, respect you, but don't talk shit on Jack White. Wow, no, did you ever think you'd get that notification in your life? <laughs> no star, but he ain't a piece of crap either. Four years at Duke, two years as a captain, Australian national team, and one more ring as a Nuggets two-way than the entire Grizzlies roster. Also, first Aussie to ever play for your team. And then sent me this horrible Photoshop of Jack White, including one where he's holding up a, the, the NBA trophy. He's a champion. Well, thank you for alerting me. My I, next pregame show, I'm going to directly quote this person and say, Jack White, 
not a piece of crap. Right. Former champion. Former champion. Probably walked into the probably walked into the um, uh, locker room here with the Grizzlies, much like Fisdale once upon a time did. Yeah. And said, "Look at my title ring. Look I'll show you how ring. to get there." I didn't leave the palm trees. For and, then, and then he said, put another shrimp on the Bobby. <laughs> crikey. <laughs> crikey. Crikey. Get a blooming you onion, Mike. The crocodile hunter's son is like his own essence of a celebrity in Australia now, and he hosts some reality show there, but he's like beloved. He's really? Adorable. Yeah. He doesn't do animals? He does animals too. Okay. The whole family, because Bindi does animals too. Oh, but, like, wow. The legacy is strong. We don't get as much of it here in America, but. Huh. There you go. I did not know that. All right. Get me caught up today on what's going on in the world of pop culture and entertainment and news I need to know. Well, there's but, this thing but, called but, the Masters updates. They start tomorrow. It's a big <laughs> piece of the pop culture lexicon. But, uh, Jess, I w- congratulations on year one. Oh, thank you. Oh, Benson yeah. Show. The Jessica Benson yeah, Show. Yeah, we one year. One year. You made it. We made it. We didn't get fired. (laughs) No, it was good. Okay, we have a lot to get to today. We will start with, we have a lot of music and a lot of divorce. Uh Uh-oh. We'll start with J. Cole, though. There's divorces? There's two. Two divorces. Okay. Uh, J. Cole wrote a diss track about Kendrick (laughs) Lamar. I don't know if you uh, caught it. It was called Seven Minute Drill on his new album, Might Delete Later. To be fair, he told us in the album name, might delete later. Had no confidence going in. But you know, what can you expect in That's this situation? Right. So he has now taken it back, even though there are no take backsies in rap and hip hop. He's he was just getting out of the way. He was performing over the weekend and he explained to the crowd that he was really proud of his new album except for one part and it's a part that makes him feel like the lamest piece of shit. Yeah. And he went on to basically like pump Kendrick Lamar up. Like, I want to say right now, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest MFers to ever touch a microphone? And it went from there. So people are big in their feelings about this. And I understand from a degree of, like, this does not fly in rap. This comes across as corny. If he can't stand on his lyrics, if he can't stand on his verses, like, what can he stand for? I'm not a massive J. Cole fan, period. So I don't, I don't care. I don't feel passionately about this. But I do feel that, for me, it's so relatable. Like, he came out fire and hot. And then he thought about it. He's like, I don't really feel this way. Yeah, but when all your really lyrics care. are like, numero umino, and I'm the best, and I'm the best, and I'm Muhammad Ali, and I'm this. Right, that's why and you, now, somebody you now calls lose you out, credibility. <laughs> right, and then somebody calls you out on it, and you immediately take your ball and go home. Yeah, it's like, lame. It, it's super lame. But there's clearly, like, no real beef here. That, that's my biggest thing. That's thought. true. They don't hate each other. And you can have... Rap beef he thought that's what he was supposed to do. And he yeah, ain't yeah, built he for it. The like, continued some guys ain't built for it. And he's not. Kendra, and, and they, uh, I did hear where Joe. So many people will never look at Joe Budden. Budden. Joe Budden said this is going to be nuclear. Said Drake's got something. And it's and going to be nuclear. Well, we know nuclear. Drake is very strategic. And, they, and that Kendrick like, Lamar also has something, too, in the bag for Drake okay. also. So this could get nasty. Well, do we think That's what Kendrick I'm Lamar afraid of. has I hope, as hot of a. I'm cool with the beat. I'm cool if you want to just say, don't let it get nasty. Like, don't let it get can do the Biggie Tupac stuff. Like, man, they both ended up dead over it. The Kanye and Drake stuff was getting really, really nasty so much that the Jay Prince dude had to step in on it. Like, no. you don't I want mean, it to get that bad. You don't want it to go there. And you know Drake to some degree. Like, there's a... And Drake had a bounty a on Pusha T. Like, I was going to, like, Pusha T lives in his head for the rest of eternity. Drake put a bounty. <laughs> like, he had Pusha T. Pusha T had him so rattled that Drake had a bounty out there for information on Pusha T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, just anything on it. We'll see where it goes. So we yeah. will see what comes now. Obviously, everyone, sure, Kendrick responds, but everyone's just yeah. waiting for Drake. That's what it comes And, and people the, are thinking it's and, coming and, Friday. And, hey, and in the end, the same people that like J. Cole before are still going to like him. And the same him. people yeah. that like Drake are going to like Drake, and the same people who like Kendrick This is going to say, like, Kendrick. J. Cole should just let it go, and eventually people just forget about it, <laughs> and it, they move on. I think Drake's going to, I think it's going to be this Friday. Mm. When when Metro and Future drop the there's your rap beef of the yeah. of the week. Um, Chance the rapper is getting a divorce, uh, which is comical because he wrote an entire album about getting uh, married and loving his wife called The Big Day. His <laughs> wife was Kristen Corley. They were married for five years. That album can now become a parody album. But so for someone who built their entire persona about being like a big wife guy, like God, I love my wife, uh, to get a divorce, it does make news. And this all goes back to people saw the tea leaves of this coming because. 
Chance the Rapper was caught on video dancing with a woman at Carnival, the big festival in Brazil. Yep. And people were like, oh, that's a little close to be dancing to somebody who's not your wife. And other people were like, oh, let him live. It's just a cultural moment. Like, let him have this thing. It's not a big deal. But then there were all these weird posts afterwards. Like, his wife started quoting Maya Angelou on that's her always, social media that's accounts. Always. And that's just, like, not a great place to come from. Like, she, she posted, most people don't grow up. It's too damn difficult. What happens is most people get older. That's the truth oh, of yeah. it. And so you start thinking to yourself, mm, Things might not be perfect in this household. And then he posted a clip of Bill Burr doing some comedy set about how much he loves his wife, but they fight a lot. And so, like, the tea leaves were certainly there to read through, but they are officially getting a divorce. And it just, like, what a poorly aged album. I said Do you now to, have a, a follow-up? I sent this to Devin and Roser the other day. Oh, <laughs> somebody, yeah. somebody on the Internet had made this the day uh, after the big day that album mm -hmm. came out. Uh, let me see. I love my wife. I love my wife. Ah, let's go ride a bike with my wife. Ah, my wife's real young. My wife's real small. Let's go to the beach and play with a beach ball. Praise Jesus God and my wife. Let's go to the beach and ride a bike. <laughs> oh, I love my wife. I love my wife. Ah, let's go. Wow. Ah, ah, I love that. Ah, I love my wife. Let's go to the beach. In my hey, the, 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 the good news is, hopefully, we get old Ken, or old uh, Chance back. Hopefully, because I loved old Chance. Yeah. One would hope. Yeah. Uh, the chat just reminded me. I actually forgot to send this story, which is a total failure on my part, but I'm just going to insert it quickly right. because somebody in the chat said, let's get to the country news, and there was big country news this week. Did you hear what Morgan Wallen did? Yeah. Through a chair? Morgan Wallen threw a chair off a balcony at a bar in Nashville, and there's a very small chance that Morgan Wallen could face up to six years in prison. Like, he's not oh, going to. On. He's a celebrity. Get I, me out of here. No, he's going to be I fine. love this. I love the, uh, I love the country singer acting poorly. Well, he was, I do. He was arrested for three counts of reckless endangerment, which are class E felonies and disorderly conduct, which is a misdemeanor. The felony charges could carry two years in prison per count. Uh, who throws a chair off a balcony? Like, Morgan is Morgan does. Wallen just the biggest a-hole to walk the earth? Oh, how dare you? I, I'm, I'm saying it. I'm saying it loud. No. I'm saying it proud. This guy just keeps Trump walking. Trump people, that's who does that. What are you talking about? You throw a chair yeah. off a balcony at a bar and I risk think, What if you hit someone? I, mean, I don't think you're kidding. Hey. Oh, my God. Je Jessica. I think, he, be I think he's just an alcoholic. Yeah. Like, I think he's just a raging alcoholic. Yeah, dude, sure. George Jones drove a... <laughs> He drove like a riding mower like six miles to the liquor store or something. Right? Like down the Like I like the country guy doing ridiculous things. Um to your question, who throws a chair off of something you could hit someone? A um uh, drunk people. B the second part of your equation was never considered when you, you're never thinking, hey, I'm going to throw this chair and maybe it could hit someone down there. Yeah, you're not. You're now. just way drunk, bro, which is, look, wildly irresponsible, terrible actions and deeds. Yeah. And yet, um, I mean, he had to cancel shows in Oxford because he was I mean, too drunk. It's right? kind of it's kind of the same thing of yeah. like yeah. Th th those he had vocal problems. He's Rosa. a I don't know what you're raging alcoholic. He's a raging alcoholic. I like the rock he just star. Keeps I just like into I just like rock star stuff. You know, these guys used to. When I was growing up, all these guys would tear up hotel rooms and stuff and throw TVs out of windows. You think freaking Axl Rose was going? Well, what if there's somebody walking under here? The TV could hit him in the head and kill him. Axl Rose literally decided at a yeah. show with Metallica, I'm not playing tonight, and started a freaking riot. <laughs> it started it's a riot. riot. Well, yeah. That's when I was a kid. Yeah, dude, he's, no, he did one in Canada, dumb too. Shit all the time. They do like, it. let's be clear. Yeah. But I also think Morgan Wallen has done enough that it's just. He's a really hard person to defend. I like understand. Like, from the N-word incident to the making out with all the chicks in the very early times of COVID, and then he gets kicked yes. off SNL, and then he comes back, <laughs> and he keeps trying, like, Making PR, out with chicks during COVID is his objectively PR, funny. His PR yeah. team has to be so of course stressed they did. and pressed of course all they did. the time. Can you imagine getting one more call, and it's like, ugh, Morgan got arrested for what now? Threw a chair off a balcony and I could have killed someone. I I but this it, is where I we're going to break. I think it makes you infinitely more interesting. Uh, the more failings you have, the more interesting you are. And that's sad, but it's true. Yeah. Yeah. He is, uh, yeah. It doesn't, 
it doesn't hurt him. It makes him more famous. It, it makes always, him even bigger. Like, I'll be completely, it always shocks me how much people love Morgan Wallen. True. Yeah. And I know he's yep. wildly popular. One of the most oh, streamed artists I, last year on I Spotify. Can't I cannot name you, name you one, one song. I can't name you Morgan name you Wallen. Besides the Leave Them Broadway Girls Alone song with Lil Dirk. That, that, oh, I can name go. a ton like, of them. I, don't I know. like him. I I'm, sh- I'm sure I've heard some of his songs, but I have no idea that it's him. I'm sure I probably have, but I just don't know that it's Morgan Wallen. Yeah. But he's... Yeah, he's insanely popular. Okay, well, there's your, there's your country music out, star being a uh, little whack like, job. Got news parties. of the week. He parties. By the, by the way, from him making out with chicks during COVID. Sorry for like, partying. That's awesome. But it came in the Everybody worst. else should have been doing that. It came in the, the worst. Part. Okay, we let's all have, have a little respect for the people, John Rose. are like, God, it was at the very beginning where things were incredibly <laughs> dicey. And you just had some giant star. No, let's a-hole go. Let's just wandering go back around three making years. out Grandma everywhere. Grandma killer. Yeah. Guys, what? Oh, what stop. If, what if those daughters, stop. what if those young girls went stop. home? We're so far past. So, like, yes, in hindsight, it's like, oh, Morgan Wallen was out there macking on <laughs> chicks at the University of Alabama. But in the moment, you're like, wow, you're just, you're just kind of an a-hole. That's just who you are. <laughs> Speaking of a-holes, another divorce. We Uh-oh. go back, we go ping Uh-oh. pong, music divorce, music divorce. Sasha Baron Cohen. No. Borat, With no the redheaded long, girl from no Wedding No longer Crashers. has a wife. It is Isla, Isla Fisher. Oh, man. They announced their divorce officially. There's a lot to this story, though. But their divorce announcement was unhinged because Isla Fisher posted And I think it's Isla Fisher. Isla. Posted it to her story, not to her page. So this doesn't exist on your feed. This is a simple Instagram story post. And usually when you get a divorce announcement, it's like text over random colored right. screen. And that's it. She Post this picture of them in tennis outfits saying, after a long tennis match lasting over 20 years, we are finally putting our rackets down. In 2023, we jointly filed to end our marriage. We have always prioritized our privacy and have been quietly working through this change. We forever share in our devotion and love for our children. We sincerely appreciate you respecting our family's wish for privacy. So Nicest divorce ever? Yeah, privacy. Is it? Straight, okay. So this all comes to, do you know who Rebel Wilson is? Yes. Okay, yeah. Rebel Wilson, the actress, her memoir came out this week. Okay. And it's been a very anticipated celebrity memoir. She has accused Sasha Baron Cohen of sexual misconduct on the set of a film a couple years ago. It's called like Grimsby. It was panned. It was a horrible movie. Okay. But she claims that despite her having a no nudity clause in her contract, he continuously pushed her to do nude scenes. And then there was one day where he tried to get her to stick her finger up his backside and she wouldn't do it. And she ended up just like slapping him on the I'm butt too instead. immature for these no, it's okay. kind of it's okay. conversations. Um, he, but, wait, so it's her been, accusation is that he asked her to stick her finger yes, in his butt? Yes, and like made a mockery, made a fool of I her, can, embarrassed I, I, her deeply. I can 100% believe See it that. See it happening. I mean, we've all seen He is Bora. weird we've as all hell. Seen too. He like, is weird. Yes. Yeah. But there's, no ch- there's no chance you could play all those characters and not, and, and and not, not be, weird. be weird. Right. Yeah. She dedicated an entire chapter in her book. And it's not just like a note. It's an entire chapter of her memoir is dedicated to Talk Sasha with, Baron Cohen's oh. behavior. And what a creepo he is. And what a creepo he is. Oh, and she man. has claimed that other women have come to her and been like, hey, he's done you know, bad stuff to us too. We don't oh. know what those stories are yet, but it's kind of been this like black cloud oh, hanging it's gonna over be a Sasha Baron Cohen and of like, is he the next guy that a lot of people kind of, there's this onslaught uh, of things. And so that all, sucks. Cause he's hilarious. All, he is hilarious. And I love Fisher. I always loved them. As sure. I remember when I first found out that they were a couple, I was like, Oh, they're how adorable. Yep. And she's so like cute. Sure. And so fun in the wedding crashers. And has she know, ever done anything else I've yes, seen? No, that might not be the answer that you were looking for. I was trying she, to remember. Yeah, the I name. just know her from wedding crashers and everybody loved her. Uh, she did this she fashion was, uh, movie. And she was funny as hell in wedding crashers too. She's she was so in definitely good. maybe the Ryan Reynolds, okay. um, Abigail Breslin movie. Nobody that knows what that is. Yes, they do. <laughs> it's a oh chick my flick. God. It was, yeah, it's a chick flick and it was an adorable chick flick at that period of time. I think that's, Really, it. Okay. She has not been in a ton. Okay. Um, She's in the strays. Oh, Confessions of a Shopaholic. That's the movie I saw her in when I was a youth, and I still have that soundtrack on my um, my music that comes through every now and then, which is embarrassing. But the whole. But the point is, in this post, she says they got divorced in 2023. Yeah. But like they've been hiding it to the point of she was on the Kelly Clarkson show on Valentine's Day. And she's talking about like what they do for Valentine's Day and how he always gets her a Valentine and signs it like. So, oh, so she's getting rid of him right stuff. before this book drops. Yes. Yeah. So it, uh, the thought is like, was it she's too much? Distancing. Is it connected? Is she yeah. distancing herself? Was there were there enough accusations where she was like, I can't support this. I don't condone this. 
So we'll find out. But I don't know if we're going to get bored at three. But by the, but I mean, that's February. That's only two months ago. Yeah. So six weeks ago, she was saying they were doing well, they Valentine's were still, like, stuff. Publicly When's together. this book come out? It came out this week. Oh, it's okay. out. All right. If and no it's, and it's bad. That's what it says. It says that he. Yeah, just that he was. What's the worst thing he did? That he tried to get her to stick his finger or her finger up his butt. I wonder if he was. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could, you could you could say if you're him, you could say I was kidding. That, and that's what he has said. I was kidding. Yeah, I don't and, really like, we want her to stick my her finger. And all yeah, this, so. I don't. I would not believe him. <laughs> I would absolutely think he would want. Oh come on! Why would you want that? Oh, he's, he's we- kind of weird. The same dude who played Borat and Bruno. Like, come on, man. That dude's weird. I forgot about Bruno. That he yeah. is weird. Yeah. I, w- I would not but of the dismiss ro- I, I, anything look, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not defending him. I'm just saying, if we're, if we're thinking about this clearly, of the requests you would have that are super... I mean, yes, that is that's so extremely weird. You know what I mean? Like if he was trying, yes. to, if he was trying to kiss her, he's trying to make out with her, or it was, it was he came on, on to her, whatever. But like, we stick your finger. In it my was butt, on it's set just in bizarre. front of other people, so it's like one of those things where <laughs> what? when you're okay, in so a he comedy, wasn't doing it as a sexual thing. No, it was like I want you to do this in the movie, but I want you to like do it, do it. Oh, in the movie? Yeah, they were like on set in front of other. So it was people. supposed to not. It was not part of the script, and he's like, look, right. just do this. And that's how all the like. Oh, it, and he's it's super, accompanied with the trying to pressure her into he doing He super nudity. creeped her out. And, yeah, he uh, super yeah. creeped her out. And wouldn't give it up and then kept going. And apparently there's other stories. So. <laughs> no, do it. <laughs> Stick your finger in <laughs> Anyway, that's... Uh, it was part of the movie? <laughs> no wonder I didn't see this well, movie. It wasn't the movie, part. It was see what the movie He was trying to get her to on. do it. Like, improvise it. So what the are they movie doing came out, movie? The movie came out in 2016. What are they and it doing had in it? A 36% on Rotten Tomatoes. So it was obviously Just people sticking their fingers critically in acclaimed. <laughs> Dimwitted Nobby lives in an English fishing town with his loving girlfriend and nine children. For the last 28 years, he's been searching for his long lost brother, Sebastian. When the two finally reunite, Nobby finds out that his sibling is a top M16 agent who's just uncovered a sinister plot. Oh. Boo. That sounds terrible. Sounds boring. <laughs> it does. Sounds okay. awful. So this isn't something that happened in private. This happened in front of a bunch of people. Of people yeah. And he said, stick your yeah, finger yeah. in my butt. That, exactly. sounds like, that sounds like a, like an mm-hmm. Adam Sandler straight to Netflix movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it okay. does like it. It does. I mean, the guy's yeah. name's Nobby. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. It goes downhill from there. All right, okay. so they're getting divorced. Next up. <sighs> Are you familiar with JoJo Siwa? Oh. Haley, Have, Haley was big into really? JoJo. It's a... Very young, and then JoJo Siwa came out of the closet, and like next thing I knew, JoJo Siwa, who was at Target everywhere uh-huh. and was the biggest thing in the world, like just kind of faded into the background. Oh, she's in this not fading really, now. It was a really weird deal, though. <laughs> no, if you understand, now. she had the. You know, I know. Girls had their hair like him, and I mean Haley was of that age where JoJo Siwa was like a wave. And it was a huge thing. And every time you would go to the store, JoJo Siwa this, and there were little dolls, and there uh-huh. were stuff. And then I remember this. She was very young, very young to be saying, I'm gay. And then all of a sudden, I just didn't hear anything about JoJo Siwa anymore. So it was everything really I, crazy. Everything I know about JoJo Siwa, I know against my will. Okay. Like, I feel like I have no desire to know anything about JoJo Siwa. I knew her music. everywhere. And so kids... Loved her. She was on Dance Moms. Oh, that I was know. her start. And she was on two seasons of Dance Moms. And then she got a deal with Nickelodeon. And then she explodes into the, the you know, young Massive on star. YouTube. Massive, massive. The only thing I remember is years ago, someone did a skit where she was like, I'm JoJo Siwa. <laughs> so I used to just run around being like, I'm JoJo Siwa. And I knew nothing about her except that she had pigtails a lot of the time and bright neon colors and a lot of glitter and just a lot of energy. Like her show, she was just running laps around that stage, right. singing songs, doing her thing, whatever. And so now... I think she came to FedEx Forum. Uh, probably. I, I think, think there's she did. a picture of her down there. Yeah. I think you're correct. Um, she's now entering her adult era. So she went away for a little bit to, to reemerge in the adult era of JoJo Siwa. And she really, really wants you to know that she's not a kid anymore. She's an adult. And she has separated her music categories on Spotify to kids JoJo Siwa. Here is the old JoJo with the bright colors. Look at her go. 510,000 monthly listeners. And now she is just the adult 
Jojo Siwa, zero monthly listeners thus far. Um, she can't just like strip the Siwa and be Jojo because there was already a better version of Jojo that existed. We will never forget Leave Get Out, one of the greatest one hitters wonders is of all she? time. Uh, she is 20 years old. Oh. This girl can't even drink yet. Anywho, she spent $50,000 on new teeth. Oh. That's one of her things that I've learned without having any desire. She has a new song that dropped this week. It is called Karma. It is awful. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of the worst songs. How do you really feel, Jess? That I have. The song. One sucks, of the worst literally. songs you've ever heard. Wow. It's so bad. I can't wait to cue this up. It already has 500,000 streams, though, so she's doing fine. Um, she had this whole thing where she's like, just wait till I can say the F word. She doesn't even say the F word in the song. She says, F it. If you're going to be adult JoJo Siwa, uh, say the word. Go all the way in. And she came out with this really bizarre interview with Billboard where she was like, I'm inventing a new genre of music called gay pop. And it's like, JoJo, gay pop has existed for 50 plus years. It's called dance music. Like, you're 20 years old. You're not inventing this genre. <laughs> this is what she oh, showed up at on. an iHeartRadio <laughs> event. She looked like Gene Simmons. She did the whole kiss thing. She really wants you to know she's a adult <laughs> judge <right> now. <laughs> I'm telling you everything I know about this project. She looks outrageous. Is she looks like she'd be in a Legion of Doom. <laughs> I just. What is it? A whole uh, animal and hawk? Is that right, Rosa? <sighs> uh, yeah, or like a um, kiss. Yeah. She's, the face paint kind of looks like Kiss. What an outfit. She's wow. kind of going for like a Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley thing. Ace right. Freely. There's a music video with Yeah, Karma. there's a Gene Simmons vibe right there she's going yeah. for. And you think you, it's terrible. You are I not Gene Simmons. You are not I Gene think she's, Simmons. We also learned that the song Karma, uh, it was written a few years ago, and they tried to sell it to Miley Cyrus, and Miley Cyrus said no. So uh -huh. Miley Cyrus had the wherewithal to be like, this song sucks. And JoJo <laughs> Siwa was like, oh, let me at it. I'm going to invent a new genre, even though I didn't even write the song. Uh, it's just not very good. I think she's really trying to do the Miley-esque thing that happens to child stars where uh, they yeah. so desperately want to shed all of the bubblegum popness that like encapsulated everything they did for so long. Your boy so, did it. Which one? Timberlake. Who? Timberlake. Oh, yeah. When I went to his show, well, I got, I got, a, it's the only time I've ever got like upset about something. I was at the, it, I felt like he so abruptly did it at the beginning. He was trying so hard to not be Justin Timberlake in sync, Justin yes. Timberlake. And I went to the show and I got, I've never been more uncomfortable than there were like, you know, I was there at the concert and then there were like, there would be these like, teenage girls and their moms or young girls and their moms yeah. or whatever like at this concert and you know how like they have a dj playing before the show whatever bro they started playing that nine inch nails song i wanna uh -huh. you like it and, and looking at these like these girls like trying to explain to their mom i, I mean it was just so awkward and yeah. so it was like what is the most over the top i am not a kid pop star thing I can that. do and to play the Nine most nails, vulgar yeah. the most vulgar yeah. song I could possibly play and I'm like dude you got a bunch of little girls and their moms and stuff here I was like no nah, this ain't it man like I get it trying to and then he was like steady talking about I don't want to drink tequila all night and he was, it was just so yeah he was so out of character when he first I'm saying like that first show at the forum yeah. as a right. solo artist was that the justification? he's like who wants to get drunk tonight you know, I went to that when I was, it was like awkward. in Denver in it was, it was fifth awkward. grade. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, but we've right. seen it with all of them. Like I remember going they do to it. the Britney Spears Toxic Tour. I am not and, a kid anymore. Exactly. And she's in the like crystal bodysuit and she's essentially like having sex in a tub. In, it was the Onyx Hotel Tour. And my parents had taken me <laughs> and my friend and like they made us leave. Oh, it's embarrassing. The friend, they were like, we can justify like we can have our talks with you. And my parents let me watch probably way too much, way too early and just like learn. But they're like, we can't have your friend going home and telling her parents like, hey, Jesse's parents took us to this Britney Spears concert where she's just like make it on stage. It makes you feel so, weird as a parent. Yeah, it does. absolutely. And, um, and it also makes the kid feel weird. Yes. The kid feels weird. Yeah, the whole thing is just a very awkward experience. But Jojo Siwa. Yeah. I'm so sorry that you all now know JoJo Siwa as well. Go listen to Karma. And I hadn't thought about if it If you in like years. it. No. <laughs> all right. I'm going to cue it up. Could it be me?
could not be me. All right, last but not least, uh, we got a very anticipated movie trailer yesterday. Oh. The Joker 2 trailer came out, which oh. stars Lady Gaga and Joaquin Phoenix. Wait, Lady Gaga's in it? Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn. <gasps> yeah. Yes. Oh, um, so we got folks. the... Is she singing? Does she sing? <laughs> Funny you should ask. No way. It's it has previously been <laughs> explained as a musical, and now the director is doing what all the directors of movies that are musicals have done in the last year, where they're trying to tell you it's not a musical, but it is so clearly a musical. We saw this with the Mean Girls musical Wait, movie that what? came out. We saw this with Wonka that was, yes, a musical. And they're not billing it as a musical, but it is definitely a musical. So the director gave this interview to Entertainment Weekly that dropped yesterday, and he said, we never really talked about it like that, but I like to say it's a film where music is an essential element. To me, that doesn't veer too far from the first film. It will make sense when you watch it. It's a musical! Oh, <laughs> and they don't want to say that because you're going to piss a lot of fans exactly, off. Exactly, because people hate musicals. Yes. Oh, wait, so <laughs> Lady Gaga's going to sing to him and then he's going to kill himself? Unclear what we're going to get. They, it looks like they're <laughs> that's using... What happened, that's what happened the last time she was in a movie. It's true. Oh, my God. <laughs> How many... Part of the two. Spoiler alert on A Star is Born, by the way. God, if you haven't seen one of the three A Star is Born, like, what that. are you doing? Do, do you know me and Elena went to that movie? It came out on my birthday. And I had no idea what the movie was about. And I was like, yeah, let's go. And we went and watched it. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> like, well, what? It's the most depressing thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I, that's depressing. I honestly. It was so depressing. Yes. Yeah, it was when it happened. They, oh. they had such chemistry. In that oh, movie. that they movie was Remember when they the showed us performing really at the Academy Awards and like they were looking yes. lovingly into each other's eyes and they kept showing Bradley Cooper's I know. girlfriend, wife, whatever she was. And I was like, mm. Yeah. That's anyway, Lady Gaga has been very intentional about like the projects that she, ha especially the acting projects. A Star is Born. Uh, she did the whole um, House of Gucci, which yep. kind of got panned. I actually thought it was fun. It mm -hmm. wasn't anything too serious. Um, but now this is like the very anticipated movie of the year, and they've already said there's going to be 15 songs used, and it sounds like it's going to be like a jukebox music, like a Moulin Rouge type thing, uh. where you're using pre-made songs that people are familiar with, but it is central to the storyline and how the story is told. So I just don't know why we're pretending that it's not I'm going to tell you this. There's no chance it stinks if Joaquin Phoenix said okay. I trust. I agree. I trust his. I trust his. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he would do it if it was corny and bad. No. I don't, I don't think, think so. so I don't either. think he would. I mean, he, he won, you want to talk about intentional. He won the Oscar for it. Yeah. Like, he won an Oscar for playing the Joker. He's not going to try to I don't think he would let it be ruined. the mm -hmm. brand. But I do know that people feel some like I've, the reactions to this trailer were everywhere from There's oh my god this looks trailer? like one of the greatest pieces of art. They use um, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. So yeah. it's like a very beautiful like slow uh. piano background. <laughs> and then I actually thought it was the song from Willy Walk in the Chocolate Factory at first. So it sounds I, like the imagination. I got song. those vibes for, and then I heard that, and all I can think of when I hear what the world needs now is freaking Austin Powers going, "Ladies and gentlemen, yes. Mr. Burt Bacharach, <laughs> Mr. <Burt Bacharach. laughs> <laughs> Mr. Elvis Costello." But I think they're gonna I use like old. They're gonna use like old movie musicals, I think. The only song we uh, know that's in it is a song called That's Entertainment, which was a Judy Garland song. But they're going to use old Broadway? That's kind of what I... Th I mean, even the trailer looks like it's some homages to, oh. like, Singing in the Rain, and I don't know. That's it's just the vibe that I get. They, are you by your <laughs> They do the... Oh, you oh, are doing yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be weird. And then they kill everyone. Yeah, it's in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be that is what's really gonna happen. artsy. They're going to kill everybody. Yeah. It's going to be... Crazy. Joker so anyway, that, that trailer. Well, that came out. Did that say that movie comes out this year? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the most anticipated. We've had some great trailers. That drop. trailer just dropped, and the movie comes out in a couple months. The yeah. Ending of the trailer. Oh. Was and we great. just got another trailer. There's a movie called Maxine. That yes. I saw well, Rand on the chat. Awesome. About. I'm so excited. For Who's it. in that? It's a trilogy. Um, it's Mia Goth. Not Mia. Right um, Dude, the trailer like, looks awesome. Yeah. Um, it's a trilogy. It's a horror movie trilogy. It's okay. Pearl and X, and this is the third. And Mia Goth is a star, and it's going to be great. What is Pearl and X? Those are the names of the other two. Movies? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. What are they? Horror? They're horror movies. Good? Yeah, they're great. Like, I, I legitimately think Maxine could move into the place where we're talking about it in award show conversations next year. The cast is great for it. I need to watch those um, other two, though. Yes, you do have to watch. Are don't they watch scary, scary? Children. 
They're gory. Oh, gory. They're like, uh, I don't know, shock value. Scare. It's Maxine. It's Mia Goth, Elizabeth Debicki, Moses Sumney, Michelle Monaghan. Elizabeth Debicki was Princess Diana in The Crown. So Bobby Mich Cannavale's in it. Okay, I know that name. Kevin Bacon's in it. Kevin Bacon's still around. How about Halsey's in it. Halsey's in it. What? Yeah. yeah, Halsey's in it. She probably huh. dies. Hmm. Yeah. All right. It looks great. I'm gonna Good watch both. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna watch both those trailers. Yeah. But I haven't seen them. Jess, they announced 2026, I believe. Toy For Story what? Five. Toy Story Five. Oh Story yeah, five. they did announce that. Oh god. I, I, did, I did see that. I am genuinely excited for Inside Out too, though. Speaking of oh, Disney Pixar yeah. sequels, that comes out in the next couple of weeks. There's this new movie, Monkey Man, that comes out or I've just seen, came out that's supposed to be yeah, awesome. With the, uh, the Dev the, Patel. Yeah. It's supposed to be violent as hell. Monkey it's Man. Great. Yeah, it's called yeah. Monkey Man. Oh, okay. What's yeah. his deal? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just a super violent guy. Just a lot of violence. All right. All That's right. good. Very good. There you go. All right. Uh, Grizzlies are going to be playing against the Cleveland Cavaliers tonight in Cleveland. Uh, that game is at 6 o'clock Central. Oh, so pregame will be I got to go to Wicked. 5.30. <laughs> are you going tonight? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Ah! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you heard anything about the Memphis cast? Have you gotten any reviews? I heard it was good. Okay, good. I've seen it a bunch. Like, yeah, right. But the I love it every the time. Song. It's the song, and I've, I've forced myself not to listen to. I haven't listened to the album in a little bit, and so I'll go in. With, I loved like, excited Wicked. ears. It's one of my favorite shows of all I time. I thought it was I great. really do love it. If you have kids, truly, like oh, disclaimer: yes. if you have kids and you are looking for an introduction into, like, hey, let's see if they like musical theater, Wicked is the perfect show. It's a spectacle. Perfect. It's fun. The songs are fun. It's catchy. Yes. It's just like the whole experience of it. Yeah, Wicked's yeah. great. I loved it when I saw it. And so, uh, yeah, I'll be interested to see if the cast, I, I think it, you can't screw that up. They put so much so good. effort into it. Like, yeah. right? It's like still so iconic to right. play. And Elfabon the songs Wanda. are the songs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's going to do it for today's show. We will be back tomorrow. Thanks to Jessica Benson. Thanks to John Rose across the glass. Thanks to Jalen back in the studio. Masters updates will begin tomorrow. Everybody say a sweet little prayer that there are no thunderstorms that get us delayed when the tournament begins. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Until then, we go.